Evil, scary China refuses to passively let us encircle it. Notes from the Edge of the Narrative Matrix. It's not the big, glaring, obvious lies that get you. The New York Times is the world's most destructive propaganda outlet, not because it publishes giant ham-fisted whoppers, but because it appears trustworthy. Its reporting looks authoritative. Children are taught in school that it's what credible news media looks like. This lets the well-crafted propaganda slide into people's minds, undetected and without resistance. The Western media are so ridiculously deceitful and propagandistic that the fact that popular comedy shows and famous comedians aren't making fun of them constantly proves those shows and comedians are themselves part of the propaganda network. Most mainstream Western reporting on Chinese military activity essentially amounts to, oh my god, you guys, China isn't just passively sitting there while we militarily encircle it and prepare to attack it. Here's an example, ABC News. Hundreds of Chinese satellites are currently passing over Australia, collecting intelligence on military training activities involving the United States and other regional partners. That's what all this banging on about China's military buildup is doing, too. Acting like it's alarming and sinister that China isn't just passively allowing itself to be surrounded with war machinery amid glaringly obvious Western preparations for war without doing anything to defend itself. China's still spending vastly less on its military than the United States, both overall and as a percentage of its GDP. Yet we're meant to act like China is the obvious aggressor nation, even though it's being rapidly surrounded by U.S. war machinery and increasingly militarized U.S. allies. One thing I've learned from interactions with Robert F. Kennedy Jr. supporters is that many of them sincerely don't understand why his position of unconditional support for Israel is such a deal-breaker for many anti-imperialists. They think it's all about Palestinian rights, but it's a lot more than that. Unconditional support for Israel doesn't just mean supporting apartheid abuses and frequent bombings of Gaza. It means supporting the regular bombings of Syria, the annexation of the Golan Heights, and Israel's insane warmongering against Iran. Israel is always in a state of war. Unconditional support for Israel means imperialist foreign policy throughout the Middle East. This isn't just conjecture. We already see it in RFK Jr.'s other Middle East foreign policy, like his staunch opposition to the Iran deal. It's a nonsensical, self-contradictory position to claim you want to dismantle the empire out of one side of your mouth and pledge unconditional support for a nation that's never not at war out the other. If you're saying both, there's one you're not being truthful about. There's not enough rage at the U.S. Empire for provoking and perpetuating the war in Ukraine. Objections you see to this proxy war are mostly just griping about how much it costs or whether it's sound strategy or whatever. But how about the fact that human lives are being spent like pennies for the advancement of U.S. global hegemony? Think about how much it hurts to have one death in your family. Think about how much it rocks an entire community to lose even one life to violence. Mountains of human bodies are piling up in violent deaths, all to secure U.S. geostrategic interests in Eurasia. It's pure horror. The Empire had multiple opportunities to end this before it started. It had an opportunity to end it in April 2022. It had an opportunity to end it this past November. But it kept shoving it through to advance U.S. interests, and young lives kept being sacrificed to the war god. Meanwhile, U.S. officials openly gloat all the time about how much this war is serving U.S. interests, while anonymously whining to the press that the counteroffensive is failing because Ukrainians are too cowardly to charge through Russian minefields under heavy artillery fire. This should draw white-hot rage from everybody. Basically, the U.S. Empire's strategy is to use Ukrainian bodies like a giant sponge to soak up as many expensive Russian military explosives as possible. For Western war propagandists, 
Syria was like a dress rehearsal for the war in Ukraine. The lies are being peddled, mostly by the same people, using mostly the same methods, funneled up into the same mainstream media platforms. The only real difference is that the empire is on the side of the official government in Ukraine, so it can simply use its officials and its media platforms as on-the-ground sourcing, instead of setting up a bunch of weird little propaganda constructs like the white helmets, etc. Syria marked a new era of imperial narrative management.